One of the things to remember as we're assembling the power cable is before we put our reds and our black wires on, we we'll want to pass the wire through the box so that the black and red wires will be inside the control box. Now, in my haste to show perfection, I've failed to do so, and there are a lot of people that will. So we're going to show you how to fix that problem, whether it be for this wire or for the other wire, which we'll work on later. There's two ways to do it. The first one is you can cut a notch in the box and just have it come through the edge of the notch. Or you can make a larger hole that will allow the wires to pass through. So I've gone ahead in this case and I'm going to open up my hole and pass the wires through. No harm, no foul. So now you'll have your wires passing through the box, clips on the outside, and now you can install your reds and your blacks. Now that we have our wires firmly attached to the power, we're going to go ahead and start with our first set of switches. With the wires now in the control box and all hooked together, what we're going to want to do is tin each of the four red wires and the four black wires. This will make it easier for us to hook those to the switches. So we'll very carefully put a little bit of heat to each wire, put a thin coat of solder on each one. Okay. Now that each of those is tinned, it will make it easier for us to connect these to our switches. First set of switches we're going to work on are the two push button switches here, which are red. So each one of those is going to need one red and one black wire. Our red wires will go to the center terminal. And to put them on, we will pass the wire through the hole and bend it up. Again, putting the crease of the wire around the terminal. And if you have a blob of solder on your wire that makes it not pass through, just go ahead and snip it off. Pass it through. Get it ready. Okay. There's two ways in which you can do this work. One of which is to solder each wire as you go, and the other one is to get them all ready and then solder. Um, I prefer to do it as I go. That way I don't have to worry about the wires coming off that I've already spent the time to feed through. So again, in this case, just going to put the heat lightly to the wire in the terminal, put a little bit of solder on, we're good to go. On the size of these switches, you'll see that each of these terminals is labeled CNO, which is, means normally open, or NC which means normally closed. In our case, we're going to be hooking our motors to the C, and NC is going to be connected to our ground wires, so that these switches, when they're not pressed, will connect each of the motors to ground. Okay. Now, if any point during your soldering, the tip of your soldering iron gets um, blackened up and has too much solder on it, go ahead and use the sponge and wipe it off qu quickly and it'll bring the tip right back to a nice shiny soldered end. The next step is we need to bring our wires in for the motors. Now the other end of the Cat5 cable needs to come in through the other hole on the box and then we'll need to open up the casing. Again, we only need to open it up a little bit so we can get access to the string that's inside here to be able to pull that and open this up. Pull back a little bit. Then we got and in this case, we only need about four or five inches worth of the cable because it only needs to go the distance inside the box to each of the switches. Okay. 
And again, we have a green, an orange, a blue, and a brown set. The brown we didn't use on the motors, so again, we'll push that off to the side for any future use you may have for them. And in this case, the orange wires go on our red push buttons as the motor that will make the vehicle go up and down. Strip each of these a quarter inch. Each of these switches, one will get the orange wire and the other gets the orange and white wire. Again, pass it through, fold it over. Okay. And that completes our soldering for our first set of switches and our first motor. The next set we'll work on are these black toggle switches. In this case, the black and red wires will go to each of the center terminals and then we'll take the blue and blue and white on one switch and the green and green and white on the other switch. It's all laid out in the manual, but we'll show you how to do it here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put our red and black wires onto each of these switches. And I'm going to lay these wires off to the sides so that they're not in the way for the next set of wires. So you see how we've got these so they lead off to the side there and I'll solder them in place. Now we're ready to take our first set of motor wires and strip these. Now this gets a little bit tricky but what we're going to do is strip two sections of this wire. We're going to strip a section here and a strip a section at the end. And to do that, we take our wire strippers, put it in the first section, and strip off a little more than a quarter inch, about a quarter inch. Then we'll go out to the end of the wire and strip off what looks like a half inch of the cover, which will be about a quarter inch of the wire itself. So we'll now have two areas exposed on that wire. We'll do the same with the white and blue. And this is just a matter of being patient and not pushing too hard. If you cut it and break it, you can always start over. Okay, now that we have those done, we start by taking the solid color wire in through the side that has the red wire attached to it. Going to push that through, including the cover, all the way to our second stripped wire section. And then fold that up. If you want, you can take a twist on that just to keep that locked in place as you work with the other end of that wire. Okay. Now that other end is going to go to the diagonally opposite pole on that switch, which will allow our motors to be in reverse when we switch the switch the other way. Okay. And with that laid out, we'll go ahead and solder that. All right. Do that same thing for the blue and white wire. This is where people with smaller hands have a tendency to do better. And then we'll hook up the other end. All right, now we have that run and cleaned. We'll go ahead and solder that. All right, and that completes the wiring for the first toggle switch. And now what we'll do is the exact same thing with the green wire to this other switch. We'll hook the other two black and reds and then run the green wires through that switch. 
So I've gone ahead and completed soldering up the green wires here. And the next step is to go ahead and unscrew these switches and put them on the inside of the box. So you'll reach on the inside and undo each of these nuts. Now we'll take these and put them inside our box. Uh, it's important to be gentle with them because these are relatively fragile wires. And you'd hate, after doing all this work, to break them. That being said, cram them in the holes. Go ahead and put the nuts back on, on the outside. Now an important thing to remember is that the nuts for the two different types of switches are different. So that if you're finding it hard to get one on, it's a good chance you might have the wrong nut. Now that we have all of our switches turned around the right way, it's time for us to test our wiring and our work on the motors. So we'll take the battery and we'll make sure that we have installed the fuse into the fuse holder and connect the red alligator clip to the red side and the black to the black. Okay. Now each one of these switches, the orange wire should be our up and down buttons. So we want to make sure that it runs both directions. That's good. We'll check our blue wire. Okay. Make sure that runs both directions. Okay. And if it runs the wrong way when we put it on the vehicle, we can loosen these nuts and turn the switches around and just turn them the other way. And we'll check our green. All right. So we now have three functioning motors, a controller that's all set up. We had no problems with our wiring. So the last thing we're going to do is secure these wires on the inside so that when you pull on them, we don't have to worry about pulling out the wires. And the way we do that is using the twist ties. Go ahead and disconnect the batteries. And take the twist tie on both our power and our control cable and zip tie those together. And that will stop it from pulling too hard in either direction. All right, take the cover to our container and screw that together. And if you're not sure that you're comfortable with your switches, you can just tape the cover on until you're happy with everything. For me, I'll just put one screw in to hold it together.